a call to order. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Put an executive session on, right? Yep. Okay. Um, correspondence. Oh, no, sorry. Consent agenda. Approve the minutes of Tuesday, August 22nd. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? I'll second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All right, hearing none, so moved. Um, board correspondence or communication, does anybody have anything? Public comment. There's none online, right? No. Do you have any comments? Oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if there was an online meeting, but that wouldn't be good for us. But, you know. So uh, I'm Carlton Bonnegly. So I'm actually the new town liaison for uh, Vermont Law School for South Royalton area. Oh. So uh, this might be your first time seeing uh, me around. I no. might have seen you walking around Royalton area. Uh, but I'm actually trying to improve the relationship between BLGS and also the community around us. Uh, we're also part of the community and we definitely want to actually improve not only our relationship here but also moving forward. So anything that can be done, um, let me know and we'll try and see what we can do to actually make it a little bit more feasible. Okay, great. Thank Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having you here. Thank you, Thank you guys. Alright, so reports to the board. Thanks. Uh, so you have my superintendent report in hand. Um, you know, I think it captures a lot of what's happening. What I what I would say is is you know, um, Anda's and Annette's and Ray's report really gets in the thick of all the exciting things that I think are happening uh, instructionally um, across the supervisory union. Um, but I would just say that uh, I've been in all of our schools multiple times now, and I'm really um, pleased with uh, our start. I'm really pleased with. Um, the focus uh, on setting expectations, pleased with the positivity I'm feeling in our buildings, um, and in general, happy with how we've been able to start transportation across the SU with the new contracted service provider. I had some worries there just in regards to a switch after having a, a longstanding uh, different contractor. In general, um, I, I just would say that it's one of the best starts we've been off to, at least in, in my tenure, and I'm really thrilled about the work that we have upcoming for our SU-wide in-service days, the work that's happening in buildings during their early release in-service days, our intentional and aligning to our strategic plan. And I'll, I'll finally just add um, that we do ha we have distributed leadership teams now meeting in um, all but one of our buildings, but the team's been identified in the final building, um, and I expect those meetings to start soon. Uh, and so that's something that you've heard me talk a lot about in regards to our structures around creating our multi-tiered system of supports. It's something that we were trying to um, possibly get negotiated into the collective bargaining agreement uh, previous to make certain that took hold and that that was part of how we did business moving forward. Even without getting it in the CBA, the really good news is, is that it's happening um, at our buildings. And so I, I really see that as one of the most, one of the biggest structures that we need in place to do the work that we're trying to do in the strategic plan. Like we have to have that grassroots distributed leadership model at each district and at our buildings in order to have those teams then look at our strategic plan and align their action plans to it in regards to priorities in the work ahead for the our different schools and buildings. So um, I'm really pleased uh, with the effort that's been put into that, and I can really see that uh, start to, to demonstrate authentic work in distributed leadership, like planning faculty meetings, planning in service time, focusing on what their professional development needs to be as a building, looking at what the needs are in their building. So um, we've, we've been in different places with that work across the SU. Some have been further ahead, but we, it's now happening in all of our buildings. So that feels good. Um, it's just taking a little time to get there, but we're there. Um, and so I just wanted to highlight that and then entertain any questions folks may have. I also, you'll just a reminder that you'll be getting academic, local academic uh, data in some of your local boards starting the second week in October. Those boards that have your meetings next week, 
That will happen in November because the window hasn't quite closed yet, but you'll get your full SU-wide academic data in October as well. Um, and then uh, just wanted to let you know that we're still working with the Agency of Ed in regards to the release of last spring's, uh, <laughs> the VT cap, so the Vermont Comprehensive Assessment uh, data. What the AOE did release is data from two years ago, recently in the annual snapshot, which you all received. We released it early. Um, I felt like the embargo was just taking way too long, so we released that SUY data prior, but the agency just released that data um, a couple weeks ago. But that is that all that data is on the SU website, and you've already seen it, if anyone talks about that. It's not the past year's data. That was two years ago data. And I'll entertain any questions folks may have. Uh, on the leadership, distributed leadership teams, was this a hard pull to get uh, the teams organized or were, was there enthusiasm, understanding the importance of what it was all about uh, and how critical that can be to make each school really thrive? Um, give us a flavor of that. or two. It's been a little bit of both. Um, I think, you know, in some of our schools there were, there was much more distributive type leadership making decision making already happening so i think that's an easier lift right yeah and some of our buildings where there was a feeling that that teacher voice wasn't um being taken into account to some of the decisions that were being made and or a feeling of like some decisions came from the top down mm -hmm. uh an example i would give to you i i feel like some of our buildings really felt like the work we did around fountas and pinnell and that literacy work prior to my coming on board was a top-down decision uh, that was pretty pretty big, right? Like we that purchase happened and went across the whole entire SU. So feeling like, is this actually truly authentic voice where they're gonna be able to make some decisions like selecting what makes sense about the science or reading around their research-based reading materials that they're gonna use as a school and get investment in? Like, I think they're starting to see they can make those decisions now um, you know, example is like in lit in math, we said you can use bridges, you can use envisions, like it had to be research based, but we allowed those teams to make those decisions with the caveat of when we say we're going to do this, we're all doing it. Um, meaning in that district, yeah. I think they've seen that that has been how this work has happened. So I think we've been able to build some more trust around that. So I think in general, now that teams are happening and they're seeing what's on their agendas, I feel like we've got really good momentum moving forward. And Anda sits on pretty much all those teams, so I think she has a good flavor to that too. And I think what I'm saying is fairly accurate. Yeah, no, I think so. I think the more people see the, the result of the, those conversations influencing from small things to bigger things, I think then we've had greater buy-in for it. Um, and then it's also just figuring out the right time and how to, yeah, how to do it in a way that, um, like people can feel like the time is um, efficient and effective and, and well timed. So, gotcha. you know, thank you. Sometimes it's just a scheduling thing. <laughs> All right. Any more questions for Jamie? Okay. We are on to August. Sure. Yeah. So again, you um, you also have my report where we talk about. Uh, the assessments that are going on now that we are um, into sort of the fifth week of school um, and getting a lot of that benchmark data, which um, we are um, all of our buildings are looking at as we head it towards that. We kind of think about school in sort of six week increments, both that's a great way to monitor progress. Um, and so we've got a lot of uh, different assessing going on to try to have more of that information ready for those conversations at the end of the first six weeks. Um, and I think the, the big piece here, um, and really happy that uh, Michael Martin's here also as well to, to talk about it, is that we do have the proficiencies um, that we, um, our teachers uh, have been working on over the last year uh, up on the website now um, for you all to, and for the public, to be able to see what it is that we are hoping that all students um, uh, are able to um, know and are able to do at the end of each grade level in each content area. Um, so we can um, pull that up. It's right on the WRVSU website under Departments, Curriculum and Instruction Proficiencies. Um, and they're organized there by grade level and content area. Um, and if you have a favorite content area that you don't happen to see there, it doesn't mean we don't think it's important. We have a couple of things that we are still working on. When, and we, um, what is up here are the ones that we have 
had a chance to complete um, with the teachers really taking the lead on that. Um, And so the other pieces like science and social studies that um, aren't showing up uh, on that initial menu uh, are in the works. Um, and we will be rolling them all out um, as they get completed, but certainly wanted to share the bulk of the work, particularly in elementary, has been around uh, English language arts and math. Um, and that's certainly where, you know, we've been th- talking a lot about the curriculum, a lot about our instructional approaches. So that is where our focus has been um, there, but uh, certainly working on all the other um, content areas as well. Michaela, anything else you want to add on sort of the process? Um, so the documents are um, forward-facing for our parents. Um, the language is, is really put into a student language around I um, can do or I understand. So that was the goal of this. And the format's the same um, throughout the entire website. Um, we're trying to make it as clean and um, simple to find um, for, for parents and families. Um, but we're really excited about um, the work that was um, that our teachers engaged in over the past year, and these will be you know documents that we look at every year, as we as we use them. So they'll they'll be um, rolled out on Friday with our teachers. And then our reporting system is aligned to these proficiencies. Right. <coughs> nice. yeah. So we do, and so on. Uh, the other part of our, our report is on Friday we have our first SU wide half day in service. Um, we had a building-based one last week, two weeks ago. Um, two weeks ago, uh, and so this is our first SU-wide one. That's an opportunity, um, again, really aligned to our goal three around interdependence of um, you know bringing our teachers and other faculty and staff members together in groupings that make sense for what their role is, whether that's around a particular project, whether that's around a, a content area that they teach or a grade level, whether it's another piece of their job. And so we've got 20, I think I added another one, so 25 different mm-hmm. groups that are mm-hmm. that are running on Friday. Um, and um, for example, I'll, I'll bring the kindergarten through second grade groups together. We'll go through, we'll um, uh, have everyone be able to ch- have a chance to look at these documents. It should not come as a total surprise to them. It's a lot of the information they've been working with, but in this way, in this organized way, they'll be able to see it and then set, split out into a kindergarten group, a first grade group, and a second grade group to really think about what does this mean for our practice? What can we learn from each other? Um, we've got kindergarten teachers who are kind of brand new to the SU, some that have been in the SU for a long time. They're going to have a chance to talk together um, and also set some goals for the year in terms of how, you know, how can we mo- maximize that time together uh, as professionals together? What do they want to get out of it? How can we support it from the um, professional learning side, um, both bringing in external resources and them as, um, you know, as their own resources for each other? So um, that is, it's an exciting week for, for all of that. <laughs> That's it. I can answer any other questions. You gave us a great chart on the intervention um, strat- no, sorry. intervention methodologies you're using uh, uh, by grade and by different uh, curriculums. Or what, what, what's the right term on that? For the intervention, yeah. the first part of the report. Yeah, here the intervention menu you yes. talked about. So that that is those are actually divided up by the sort of the domains within literacy yep. that we are right foundational skills, phonemic yep. awareness, those sorts of things. So, yeah. And then you've got different grade level, yeah, uh, uh, programs. So yes. or, or, I don't know what, what, mm-hmm. am I using the right term? Yeah, yeah. yeah. programs yeah. to tackle that to, to yes. achieve those yes. the, the, each one of those columns there. Okay. Could you do that, or is one available in the future for having to do with mathematics? Yes, it's interesting. Math is really, um, it's, it's a little bit more straightforward, particularly in our elementary, uh, in that we have, oh, good. We have some really <laughs> great aligned resources. We, for, um, we have Bridges Intervention, which we actually use in all of our schools. Um, and there's also, uh, this is one of those where it's an acronym, and I actually don't know, um, MDIS, um, intervention system, which it aligns to our Envisions math program. Yeah. Um, and so those are both already being used. So there's not quite as much uh, uh, choose, your, choose your own <laughs> adventure. Both of those do a really good job of aligning to where, um, to identifying where students are and placing them where they are in the intervention program. We will add some more, but the literacy was a much bigger need. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for a variety of reasons, um, whereas math, it's more clear um, where we're heading, what folks are pulling from. And we use some Title I uh, resources this summer to um, ensure that all of our interventionists um, and special educators had those math resources. So it's, it was a little, it's a little more straightforward there. <laughs> One of the, uh, in our retreat, we're not going to be quizzed on this chart <laughs> because <laughs> at least give us 24 hour notice so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can cram. Thank you. Do you mind more coffee? All right. Any more questions, guys? All right. Director of Special Service. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So you have my report as well. Um, it's it's a it's been a busy September, but a great September of just you know getting um, services and interventions up and rolling. Um, also, kind of absorbing a lot of um, students and families who have moved into our communities, getting them rolling um, in programming in school and also their interventions and services. Um, we've also had a, a lot of professional development continue. Um, you know, from the summer right into the fall. Um, so we had Handle with Care training with Claire Martin. We've had uh, more corrective reading, um, GI reading um, with Jamie. Um, Anda had mentioned our um, first SU half day coming up. Yeah. We've got Writing Revolution happening, which is yeah. really exciting. It's a writing intervention and writing structure um, program. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, Claire Martin providing what we're calling a social emotional toolkit, um, which is great. And that's open to, you know, nursing staff, support staff, custodians, um, mm -hmm. you know, everyone. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, six part series that they're gonna offer. Um, and I do have one new hire um, an occupational therapist, um, Stephanie Yarnes. Um, she um, is coming from having um, <coughs> therapeutic outdoor education experience. Um, she just uh, received her degree and license in May. Wow. So she'll be, um, she's, she's already started um, in making a great, a great impact. So we're really lucky to have her as well. Um, and then just lastly, um, the Vermont Agency of Education has notified me that um, our special services department has passed um, targeted <coughs> monitoring. So we've been in targeted monitoring for five plus years, um, and we finally have um, shown that we're proficient in all of the indicators um, that the uh, Federal Office of Special Education requires. So. Administered through AOE? Yes. Yep. It's no easy feat. It's, it's 100%. Not. You have to get 100%. So. It's a huge accomplishment yeah. for our team. Yeah. So yeah. it's the Sorry. team. Awesome. It's the team. It's not, it's not me. It just, it's our team has worked really hard. They've been very open to professional development. Um, they've been really open to, to feedback and kind of working together. And so it's great. Really great. Thank you. Awesome. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we, Ms. Tara. So you all have my report, which tells you everything I'm working on in October and the rest <laughs> of my team. And then I also have in our packets for us our fiscal year 23 year-end projections. And one thing that isn't in our packet, and a couple of boards have already seen it, but not all, is with our new auditors this year, we actually have some questionnaires that they've asked our boards to complete. So I'm visiting each of your board meetings in person this month to hand those out. Um, so we also need it done for the full SEU board. So Kathy, as the board chair, you get to do it. <laughs> Here's your copy. And then I need one more board member who's willing to complete it and fill it out and send it in to the auditors. I'm doing one for right. our board, so yeah. I'm just a volunteer. All right. <laughs> there you go. 
Thank you. And there's a self-addressed stamped envelope to send it back directly. And then Ray, if you could put up the fiscal year 23 projections, we can go over that. Thank you. And don't feel like you, if, if you don't know the answer to one of those, yeah. you can put in NA. Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and we can work through it together. I put in DK, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start on the expenditure side of the budget. So it works the same way at the supervisory union that you've seen at your indiv individual board levels. We go over um, potential areas of overspending. So ours this year was advertising, our computer, our copy lease, and then the um, Vistas new teacher health assessment, which is a number that we project based on how many new teachers we had last year. But we will pay this assessment every year for any teacher who is newly licensed, as long as they work for us, they pay this. Um, so each year we'll see as we get new staff that that number um, could increase. And then the potential areas of savings and salaries throughout. So this is both, again, central office and special education budget. So it's those two budgets that you vote on um, for the entire SU combined. So in salaries, budget versus contracts, we had just under $79,000 in savings this year. And um, benefits, just over two grand. Transportation, because we were able to utilize some additional IDEAB grant funding that we received from carryover from a prior year, we were able to use that so we were able to save on the actual budgeted transportation. And then the same thing for contracted services. With all the extra federal funding that we receive, we were able to save on the budgeted contracted services. And then tuition, that's um, the tuition, I, as Jamie and Avnet had mentioned many times throughout the last year, that's bringing our kids in and not sending them out to those high place placements. So that's where our tuition savings came in from. So current projection is we have um, $388,898 savings on the overall expenditure budget. Any questions on that? Go through the well. Okay. On the revenue side, so based on our federal title funds, we received a little bit more than we budgeted for last year, which we had talked about previously. So we had about $45,000 there. We got more in our new census block grant than we had originally budgeted for. And then the extraordinary, extraordinary reimbursement was less than what we budgeted for because we were using those federal funds to pay for those services that we normally would get extraordinary reimbursement for. So we get less there because we can't double dip and can't submit through extraordinary re reimbursement when I'm using federal funds to pay for the original expense. So we had a reduction there. And then again, IDEAB basic, that's our grant through the agency. We got a little bit more than we had originally budgeted for on the regular side. Preschool was a little less than what we had budgeted for. And then our triple E grant was again, a little more than we had budgeted for. So overall, we had a reduction in revenue of $72,072. And you add that to our savings on the expenditure side. So current projection for a surplus for the supervisory union is $316,826. Nice. And I feel like I'm yelling, Rodney, because you're right next to me, but yeah, I'm I can hear you. everybody. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> nice job, guys. Good question. On the tuition, help me. Uh, there seems to be various components. One component would be where we have to have some of our students that need particular help and assistance, and we we get we contract with others, and that, that, that's tuition, I assume. And so, part of the savings is that we didn't have we didn't have we had more resources to serve these students within our SU, so we didn't have to farm not farm, but. Um, we have to do out of district placements okay, so, for so that our was, students. That's part of it. Now another one is um, tuition because I'm in a choice town. You know, after sixth grade, they have a choice of where to. It's all that. 
What you is that, is that all special that? ed? Yes, out of only special all education. Only special education. This is all special. This is yeah. all special ed. Okay. Yes. But our, our not having it be an out of district placement for tuition. Um, don't we budget though? Uh, assuming how no, many kids are coming ACS. in or not? So that's all local budget. That's in the local budget. So that's in that's in your local district budget under tuition. Yep. And then for the high school, they would budget that as revenue yep. in their local budget. So this is the SU administrative okay. special <laughs> ed so, out of district place. Wow. Yep. Wow. So like a student that's going to some examples yep. regular choice academy, yep. EVA East Valley Academy. Um, the Maple Hill School yeah, and Farm, Maple Hill, cetera, and then like uh, Hartford has their RAP program, and then their RRC program. So we these are kiddos that we're range. paying yeah. those entities to take on because yeah. we don't have the resources to teach them here. We were able to bring those students back in this year, as that <laughs> have reported throughout the year, so that we're saving and we them that tuition. And we haven't needed to send yeah. more students out to those types well, that of sounds programs. Like a, I mean, we're talking about a celebratory evening. Yes, this absolutely. It's huge <laughs> that we do not have to send abroad. We can provide yes. adequate, yes. excellent uh, educational mm -hmm. services to our kids. Yes. And that's that report Annette does a couple times yes. a year. So we'll try to highlight that better. Yes. So that I mean, I, that, that. that's something that we need to get out and tell that story out there because it just... That, that, that speaks volumes to the whole team, it seems to me, if I'm getting this wrong. And it, and it also ends up not only helping the kids, but we save money that we can utilize other places or save mm -hmm. the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. I, that's where I got confused. Okay, the rest yep. of it's in the mm -hmm. district budget. Yep. Mm -hmm. all, all that you'd see in your district budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then our budgeting going forward, we'll be looking at this $316,000 and deciding uh, on that surplus, um, how much of that should be, how that should be utilized, like investing in capital programs and that sort of thing. Have I got that correct? So Talk this, about SU surplus. So, this, yeah. so the supervisory union, if we have a surplus here, yes. it impacts the assessment that your districts pay. So if we have a deficit in the supervisory union, we have to reassess the districts at the close of the fiscal year. If we have a surplus, we can choose to keep it for one year within the supervisory union, or we can pay back assessments to the districts. Okay, and then it's up to the district level to decide whether we want to put it into yeah. capital or we want to put yeah. it someplace, an extra teacher yeah. or two. Yeah. yeah, so we'll have to take this up next month as we start our budget process. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Will, Will? Yeah, so I'm just wondering, I mean, does the does the SU have a mechanism for capital improvement planning and funding? So the for SU the, the building you're sitting in? Yeah, the SU can't own property. So we don't I mean we could yes. So if our landlord here said you have to pay for a new air conditioning system, we could then yes, budget for that and utilize those funds. But as far as a reserve fund for the supervisory union, because we don't physically own property, mm -hmm. we don't have a capital projects fund within the supervisory union. That makes sense. And we can't legally own property. Right. As a okay. supervisory union. So there's no no mean no need for us to do the types of funds that we talk about at the district level at the SU level. Basically, we handle it at the district level. Yep. OK. Although I am curious, Tara, and we could research this, whether or not this surplus could possibly be put in and <clears throat> into like a tuition reserve fund for special, for special ed. Because um, that will could be a really good use of these funds because <clears throat> it could. It, I don't know if folks heard me. So some, in some of your districts, we create these tuition reserve funds where we will put these reserves into a fund in the event that we have an influx of students who move in or if we, were in an, if we have a large sixth grade group going into the tuition pool and a 12th grade group that's smaller, we could tap into the tuition reserve funds. And when I said to Tara, I am interested in looking into more whether or not the supervisory union could create a reserve fund that would help offset if we did have students who needed out of district placements and, and or an influx that were not budgeted whether or not we could tap into that for that cause and i don't know the answer to that i will find out yeah 
and what the course of action is yeah, that we would we need would, to take yeah. in order to do that because usually mm -hmm. it's a vote of the town. I know. We may not be able to. So I will it find might out. Be worth asking. Yeah, I will absolutely find out. All right. Any other questions for Tara? All right. So we are ready. Good work, good news, the whole team. It's not easy as a supervisor union to do that. So. <clears throat> okay, uh, as I uh, bring up my report, um, you have my report in hand, and I would uh, field any questions either virtually or here in person. And I would add, that's one of the new, new things this week. We're adding some outdoor air quality monitors to our schools under uh, new HVAC projects. So that is uh, Rochester, Stockbridge, Bethel, and Royalton, and Tumbridge. Um, they have indoor air quality monitors that have been in place since March, and this project runs through December. It's part of uh, the grant funding for the related projects. Any questions for Ray? All right. Thank you, Ray. Um, policy committee update. Who wants to take it from the policy committee? I can. Tonight at the policy committee, we discussed um, how we're going to move forward. We have three policies that we're going to adopt tonight, hopefully. Um, but we also have we talked about what the, the next work of the policy committee and we decided we're going to we have several pages of policies that we already have in force we're going to start going through each of those Jamie is going to prioritize them by policies that we we see have issues or things that have come up that might need um, adjusting or tweaking policies that are required by the VSBA to make sure that we're up to snuff with those and if there's any changes we get those updated and then just all of our policies we think it'll take about five years. <laughs> it depends, Jamie, whether or not you actually link the policies. I know, I know. Yeah. So the big joke is I created this chart for everybody, and I've had every policy open over the last two days and did not hyperlink them in for easy access. There's supposed to be a hyperlink here. So no hyperlink. we will do that. <laughs> And Ray's going to teach Jamie about spreadsheets. Yeah, that as well. So it's a learning experience. <laughs> All right. And so on to adopting the um, policies. Act to adopt policy A20, which is the board civility and code of ethics policy. We've been working on this one for... We ended up being <coughs> draft six. Uh, Maura, this ended up draft six when we finally put it to bed so this is our final version and um, our final reading so we would like to have a motion to adopt this tonight I'd like to move uh, the adoption of the code of ethics board member civility and code of ethics as proposed is a 20 and I also want to come in the policy committee because this is an example where it's not easy. It sounds so easy, and you have to go back and think and think and review and revise, and you get the import from six boards. All of us have remarkable ideas, and you have to chase those down and pull them together, and I think what you've done here is uh, commendable, and it's also very important. We've got to be civil in our behavior, uh, setting examples for our kids, for our communities, and for the people that work with us. So. I'm very pleased to move this this policy. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? I'm happy to second, but I will not second it this only because I need some sort of a member of the policy committee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there any discussion on the policy? All right, hearing none. All those in favor to adopt policy A20 say say aye. Say aye. 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 Are there are there any nays? All right, hearing none, the policy passed. 
All right. Next policy is F-35 Fire and Emergency Prepa Preparedness Drills Policy. Do I have a motion? I move, I, move we, I move we adopt the policy, F-35. No, 34, sorry. It's 34, this one. This one's 34. I'll second it. All right. All right. Any discussion on F-34? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any nays? All right, policy is passed. Um, act to adopt F-35 access control and visitor management policy. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. All right. Is there any discussion on F-35? <coughs> All, right. All those in favor of adopting F-35 say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Hearing none. None. F-35 passes. All right. Um, we have discussion items. WRVSU. Full board retreat planning? Yes, yeah, so we had October 10th down as the date. Um, we need to decide what the location is for certain and the time. We did it at the high school last time, uh, mostly just because it's central. Um, yep. So are folks, are folks still okay with that location as it being centralized? So high school good for everybody? And what time would we like to start? We went like five to eight <coughs> last time, I think. Did we go that early or no? Yeah, I think we did I think five we to eight. Did. So five to eight work for everyone? Is that kind of close for work schedules or will that work? Yeah, like getting there right at five maybe. Um, we could go 5.30. Want to do 5.30 to 8.30? That'd be easier, yeah, yeah. That'd be easier than we'll do that. All right, 5.30 to 8.30, Jamie. Okay. So we've done the survey on your board goals. We So I will resend that out. Some of you have filled it out. Uh, it would be good to get some additional data on that. Okay. Um, so we can certainly, I thought one of the things would be analyzing that data and, and re-looking at your goals um, as a progress monitoring and looking at are those still your priorities. Um, and that, um, I thought that was a good process that we went through last time too around that discussion <laughs> at the full board meeting. Um, one of the things I wanted to propose, and, and I look at this, just tell me if this is something you're excited about or not, but um, we've got this strategic plan and the board's reviewed it and the board adopted it. I would like to um, suggest that maybe we take some time as a board to break out into some committees to analyze and progress monitor each goal of that plan. And then those committees could come back and share where they feel like we are in regards to those tasks to the full board. Am I making sense? Like to really dig in and progress monitor and really make certain folks grasp what's in that strategic plan. Um, much like our schools are, I'd like to suggest possibly that the board consider that. I think that's a good idea. Everybody agree? Yes. Okay. Sounds good, Jamie. And Bill, I know you had sent Kathy and I some other ideas too. I don't know if I've missed any of those or not. You know, one is, it's, I think you've talked about it, reviewing how um, the SU board did in the goals that we established for ourselves last year. And then, uh, again, looking at the superintendent's goals for the year that we're starting and whether we need to amend or change or uh, uh, add to goals uh, for the for this year for the SU board. I think that's just, the goal setting process is just huge and reviewing how do we do and then what do we want to do going forward and making sure that we're in sync where we're, uh, we're committing the, the superintendent, the superintendent's committed to the board of where SU is going to go. And the other thing I, 
um, most of you are aware that AOE board um, recently adopted um, um, uh, local public school standards and part of those standards uh, and they're going to go into effect um, um, 2025 I believe part of those are school board governance goals we uh, the state is now going to say that we need to have a level of, of how we conduct our business and the things that we uh, focus in on um, for instance like goal setting uh, for instance Many of these things we're already doing, like evaluating the superintendent. Um, also having governance uh, uh, standards ourselves. And so I think it would be useful to at least become aware of what the state is suggesting um, and build that into working that for this year of how we want to put the SU board in sync with the state's governance um, expectations. Uh, they're not going to start cracking the whip, but I happen to think I was on the task force. These are things that uh, common sense we're doing about 75% of it right now. So let's celebrate and also um, hone in and be prepared to go the final um, 30, uh, 25 yards into the end zone. So I was, that was another idea for the uh, retreat, just to talk about that and how we're going to tackle that this year. Anything else? Okay. Looks like we have a plan. Okay. All right. Um, WRVSU Tunbridge Fair Table. Who's back? Yeah, this was year one. As admin team, we've already collected a bunch of feedback how we're looking to try to beef it up and improve it for next year um, <clears throat> based on it being our first year. Uh, I want to thank everyone. Uh, who stopped by and or helped um, cover the booth. Um, you know, one of the things I'll say, and then the board can talk further, is uh, for me, it just highlights, um, I think, the opportunities that we need to be looking to pursue in regards to if we are community schools, how are we getting out in the community and meeting po people in the community versus always trying to get folks to come to the school. Um, and so I, I was there three days and just was able to connect with a lot of constituents who I know who were very comfortable talking to me about how they thought things were going in that setting, but who I think we would be very challenged to get to come to a dinner in one of our buildings. Um, and so I've started a lot of conversation with Mary Shell, our community school coordinator, around how do we start to really identify across the SU what those events are and how do we look to make certain we have a presence there? Uh, an example is we had that table at the Bethel Ford Festival this past uh, weekend to try to, to start to do that work. Um, but just looking at how do we really start to leverage our community events and then make certain we're there at the community event uh, versus trying to create our own always and ask people to come to us. So that was one of my big takeaways. And then I'll hand it over for other thoughts and discussions. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, discussions? I had fun being there with uh, Jeff Thomas, and uh, so we're <laughs> a tag team, and boy, he knows all these kids coming <laughs> through the tent and uh, coming over the coach and uh, the principal, and, and that was really exciting to see, um, and, and just the connection's still there. Um, and I was more, uh, I signed myself kind of with adults, and I wasn't that successful. So um, I'm going to have to work on that. But the, it occurred to me that we, that booth is, needs to be, it can be more powerful. And one of ways is to have a three-sided booth. You know, right now we had kind of the backdrop, we had the table. Um, so that we can highlight why we are special, why people should be interested in us whether it's a kid, gee, I didn't know they had a soccer team, or I didn't know they have music and uh, lessons or all that sort of, and parents thinking about, gee, where am I going to send my kid in when I get to a choice year and that sort of thing. And I think if we had three panels that we could have more of things like the championships is one of it, our academic success story is another. Um, 
um, whether well, a video, but the nice thing is as we develop this, we could move that around. So it's to Bethel or it's to Royalton or it comes over to Stockbridge. This, we have it right there. Um, and I'm not sure people know what W R V S U <laughs> is. And so they kind of looked mm -hmm. and I think we need to talk about our branding and uh, I'm really getting excited about that. And part of my thinking is they can relate to schools. Oh yeah, oh, this is Stockbridge. All right, this is, um, so how do we highlight the school so that we bring them to have that conversation at the table? And um, so that's just some of my thoughts on, on that. I, I love the idea of outreach, um, I really do. Yeah, yeah. and if I might, might say something on that, I was sorry to miss the, the Tunbridge table. Um, has a nice ring to it, by the way, Tumbridge table. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, I think this is a great idea. And uh, as far as, you know, maybe the onus can't be totally with uh, Jamie, you know, it's great you're reaching out and stuff. I mean, maybe there should be a, a committee or whatnot that can kind of handle this kind of outreach thing. And we can have, uh, you know, members just kind of really stay kind of in tune and, and kind of look for these opportunities. That's a great idea. Yeah, That's a good idea. that could be something we should talk about as a board goal, I think, and at the retreat and talk about if that's something we want to do is create that community committee, Dustin. Yeah, I like that. Anything else? All right. So, I think Mary Shell would like that too. Have to, yeah. yeah. We'll take a <coughs> So we're going to have a, an executive session at the end, so we're going to skip over that real quick. Um, is there any other public comment? Uh, you're right. I didn't actually, I didn't quite catch your name. I'm sorry. Uh, Bill Edgerton. Bill. No, uh, Bill, you actually have a really great idea with the branding as well with the tent. I came from a lot of world with the expos and you really have to capture someone within that first five seconds. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they are not gonna wanna stop. And if they don't stop, they don't wanna hear your pitch or take in information. Mm -hmm. And instead of being a waypoint, you could be a destination at the fair. Mm -hmm. So that gives you an enormous amount of recognition and knowing that you're actually there, people do actually wanna stop. Mm -hmm. And that is actually very effective in terms of community building and outreach ability. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're going to get your name and number. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 who's keeping notes here, Ray? <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to follow up with you. Oh, not a problem. Great. Um, mm -hmm. uh, resignation new hires. You already. Share my new hire. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a new hire in the business office. Jacob Hinton joined us last Tuesday as our payroll accounting clerk. He came from the banking world, um, and we're really excited to have him on board, and he hit the ground running and seems to be doing really well. Great. Any other business tonight, guys? All right. Our next meeting is, well, we're going to have a retreat on the 10th, and then we'll have a regular board meeting on Tuesday, October 24th. And the board members, I ask that you hang out for a short executive session, please. We make a motion to come out of the executive session. Second. All right, so we're out of executive session. And Bill, would you like to make our motion? I'd like to move that the White River Valley Supervisory Board vote to accept the recommendations of the superintendent's negotiating committee for the superintendent's contract. I'll second. Any discussion? Thank you for your work. <laughs> cool. Yeah, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? All right. Thank you guys.